Y'all want me to give it your entertainment ticket. Get us at www.yeticket.com. I'm here at the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival, but I'm here with one of the filmmakers, and this guy is really coming up in the world. He's here with his second film. Let me introduce you to Alex. How you doing, Alex? I'm good. Thank you, Al. Thank you for having me here for the second time. Fort Lauderdale is a great place for me. First time I came here, I came with a the movie they came to play, and you guys gave me the Audience Award, which is the sweetest. Well, we didn't give it to you earn that. Well, yes, and they didn't give it to me, they gave it to the movie, yeah. and it earned that. And there was a whole team behind it, and Laurie Miller, the producer, and um, I don't know, here we are again. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're here with your second film, Kids with Camera. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Kids with Cameras came out of my desire to explore education, um, and arts education, and special needs education. I made a movie called Hobart Shakespeareans um, for PBS about five years ago, mm -hmm. and it touched me so much I wanted to go back in the classroom and a friend of mine, a famous educator by the name of Brad Kopenick, um, told me he was doing uh, a film camp with autistic children. Mm. Um, we called that, that class was called Aspies. That name has been declassified since then. Asperger's is not recognized anymore as a diagnosis right. itself, but it's autism spectrum disorder. It's part of that. And I went and I met these, uh, these kids who make movies, uh, make music, write poems, and I was blown away, wow. uh, not just by their talent, but by how this kind of narrative and performing art helps them express themselves. Um, my pet theory is that a neurotypical actor takes her experiences from life mm -hmm. and puts them on stage or on, in front of the camera on film. Uh, a non-neurotypical, an atypical actor, autism in particular, um, will be collecting elements of behavioral vocabulary right. so you go into a, a stage environment yeah. and they don't know maybe the kid doesn't know that a touch like this means friendship and mm -hmm. uh, maybe this is brushing against uh, someone in the subway and maybe this is a an inimical hit mm -hmm. well on stage you can explore that as a safe and sacred space where you can explore that yeah. stuff and then maybe hopefully they'll remember in their real life how to use it so the process is inverted so we made the movie it was a labor of love it started long ago uh, too long to mention, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, and it gathered momentum. You know, uh, they gathered some celebrity endorsements. Miss Annie Potts, the the actor, um, gave us the voiceover, and we had some of the best Hollywood talent doing the graphics. David uh, Brown, who is, uh, if you anyone watches 24 or any of the big Fox shows, he does all the title sequences right. for them. And um, and Kevin Spacey endorsed it, and Mayor Winningham, and John Landis, and. Here we are. Wow, wow. I have not had a chance to see the film yet, but I'm really encouraged and I'm, I'm going to see the yeah. film uh, pretty soon. Now, your other film, mm -hmm. They Came to Play, why did you want to shoot that type of film? I'm an amateur musician. Uh, now, I'm a real amateur musician. I study voice and I started as a pianist and um, I studied guitar as well. Um, and I've always gotten the most pleasure, I mean, let's face it, being a rock star or a classical pianist, <laughs> right? <laughs> Being, getting out there and having 10,000 people uh, uh, jive into what you're doing, to what you're creating, to your mood, and you, they go, you go up, they go up, you go down, they go down. That's an amazing thing. It is. It's the most direct kind of gifting and power. Um, and, and to meet people who are lawyers or housewives or doctors or financial advisors or former financial advisors, um, but who still find the time every day to keep up the high level of musicianship, that's just something that is so enriching to them. Mm -hmm. And that's a movie that uh, Laurie Miller and I made because we felt, you know, go and pick up that guitar. Go and learn a new dance step. Go and pick up that easel and, and those. I oils. really enjoyed the film, yeah. Take th those voice lessons. Yeah. Learn how to take your voice higher I can or see. lower. Yeah, do something mm -hmm. because it enriches you. You owe it to yourself, you know. If you're going to get yourself a, a cup of coffee or eat that extra slice of pie, you also owe it to yourself to give something back soul-wise. Now, when the, uh, the participants, they, when they, uh, had they had a chance to see the film, Kids with Cameras, how did they feel about it? You know, you'll see the movie, and uh, perhaps we can talk briefly, although it's going to get very loud in here. Um, what I like about this film is that it's extremely honest. We didn't mollycoddle or, or cover, sugarcoat anything. Um, some of these kids, as you know, autism has several markers. There's, I think, between seven and 12 markers. Yeah. And you can have, 
you can have, for instance, good social skills, but be completely dyslexic. Or you can have these compensatory genius level mathematical skills, but have zero social skills. We've seen that. A lot of the mathematical geniuses are borderline autistic. Um, and you'll see the so-called geek. I went to MIT. I, I'm kind of a geek myself. <laughs> the, the, the borderline geek personality where you can do things in your head and you know how a TV works or inside out, right? But y you try talking to a girl or even to someone else. You know, have a regular interaction. It will be harder for you. Well, think of autism as having some of those aspects. Right. And, and some of these kids have seem perfectly, I don't want to use normal as a word. Um, and some of these kids don't. And you have to be, I felt it was important that I'm, that I'm honest in the movie and in their portrayal because it's also an educational tool, the movie itself. People watch it, and I've, I've got this, gotten this comment over and over again. I didn't know autistic people did that or did that or didn't do Really? That. Didn't do they were that. shocked about that, huh? Because you see, you know, there's, there's, there, there are particularly a couple of kids in there who have some social awkwardness. And it's important when you meet someone in a social setting, if you've seen a movie like this or if you've informed yourself a little bit, you might avoid a very embarrassing situation for yourself and especially very hurtful. It might be only embarrassing for you. It might be terribly hurtful and damaging for that young person. If you, you realize, okay, this person is a little socially off, don't say, you're a dweeb, you know, don't think that. Right. Maybe turn around and ask somebody, some one of their companions. What? And then if you know, you can, you can uncover and discover who that person really is. And they might be absolutely phenomenal. They may be the next Bill Gates. They may be the next Einstein. You just don't know, just because they don't act as smooth as a con man in, um, in public. Wow, so we, we're gonna see a lot of surprises in this film, kids with cameras. I can't wait to see it. Well, Alex, thank you for taking the thank time. You, and thank you for coming to Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival. I love it. And we're glad that your film is in. And uh, you keep uh, supporting us. This is our 25th year. We're coming back for the 26th. I'm Al McGee with your entertainment ticket. Get us at www.yeticket.com and keep watching us every day and the day after. And uh, this is a great guy, Alex. I'm glad he I sings. met him. You should hear him sing. Oh, yeah. <laughs>